So welcome to My Smart Tech TV. Today I'm joined by Mark Deuter, who's the Managing Director at Aerometrics. Welcome, Mark. Thank you, Jess. Pleased to be here. Now, Mark, tell us a bit about you and what Aerometrics do. Okay, so uh, well, I'm the Managing Director of Aerometrics, uh, have been for uh, 16 years involved in leading the company. Um, Aerometrics is uh, involved in geospatial technology. It's uh, a fascinating area. It's an area that underpins a lot of industries. We deal with about 18 different industries, but geospatial means things like uh, aerial imagery. We capture aerial photographs and we present those in digital form to our, to our market. We also do laser mapping with aeroplanes using a technique called LiDAR. And we do 3D modeling, which is um, making three-dimensional maps out of uh, cityscapes. And so uh, CBDs and engineering project areas and those sort of things. Um, and ultimately, the intent is to, uh, for our customers to get the information that they need to make critical uh, project decisions or investment decisions out of the uh, products that we make. And who are your customers? What, who are some of the companies that would use these types of technology? Yeah, we, we have a very diverse range of customers, everything from uh, engineers to local government to environmental groups, agriculture. Uh, you'd be surprised at how uh, ubiquitous uh, that uh, our offerings are received uh, in the market, basically. Yeah. Now, I want to dive in a bit more on the actual technology that's used to yep. those three different pillars. Can you talk me through how it, how it works and how the technology uh, gets yeah, those sure. images? Yeah, so, uh, all right, okay, for aerial imagery, we're using light aircraft, uh, twin engine light aircraft. We're using massive cameras, uh, huge cameras, and stuff that you couldn't carry on a drone. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're capturing every capital city four times a year. Uh, we're cap capturing most of the uh, regional and rural cities once a year. Uh, but uh, it's, a, it's quite a sophisticated operation. We, we know the location of the camera and the aircraft for every exposure to within three centimetres in, when it's in the air. So, uh, and we're able to form these dimensionally correct maps out of the images. And how far, how, how, um, how broad, like what's the dimensions that the camera can catch and how, do they have to fly over literally every area of the city or is the camera... Yeah, we fly runs up and back. You know, those run spots are, are typically about three kilometres apart. Um, so, yeah, we'll uh, cover an entire city, perhaps in a, in a flight or two. Um, yeah, so there's a never ending challenge of keeping the information up to date. That's very important to our customers. And we're actually selling that service through a subscription model now exclusively. So, um, so our uh, subscription service is called Metro Map. And, uh, and that's starting to be noticed in the market, I think. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're doing a lot of work in our marketing to, uh, to improve that profile. Um, okay, so that's aerial imagery. And then we have uh, uh, LiDAR, which is laser mapping from aeroplanes, a similar concept, light twin engine aeroplanes. Um, instead of uh, using the sun's reflected light to capture a photograph, we're actually shooting out laser light from the aircraft and measuring the time that it takes for the laser beam to go down to the uh, ground and be reflected and come back to the aircraft. And you can imagine that's a very short space of time because we're measuring using light. Um, but we're who capturing- use that? What, who, what types of companies would use that kind of technology? Or yeah, uh, so yeah, about 10 different industries that I could uh, nominate. So we started very strongly in the mining industry where we were measuring stock uh, piles uh, and uh, pit volumes and those sort of things. But we've diversified that considerably now to uh, environmental applications where we're measuring um, the shape of terrain and coastlines and looking for uh, areas that are going to be affected by climate change and, and sea level rises, those sort of things. Also using uh, agriculture where we're doing tree counting for plantations and so forth. Um, and uh, construction, engineering, um, urban forest canopy mapping, you know, there's a, a very wide range of applications and some uh, very exciting ones in uh, bushfire fuel load modeling, for example, where we can come up with very accurate estimates of the biomass of the fuel load in a particular area so that we can determine where um, the areas of greatest fuel load are and the authorities can use that as an input into their risk and hazard assessments. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, LiDAR is, uh, is an amazing technology. You know, we send out 
when we're flying, we, we actually sample the ground at about 2 million times every second, if you can believe that. I still can't get my head around it. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, so we're taking an extraordinary number of measurements of the terrain surface and all the vegetation above it and the buildings and so forth as well. And, and then the, the third one, yeah. <laughs> 3D modelling. So uh, 3D modelling is, um, is an implementation of uh, photogrammetry. It's the science of taking measurements from, uh, from photographs. And we're utilising helicopters to do that. And uh, we're shooting out from the helicopter at all sorts of different angles, oblique angles oh. down to the ground. Every one of those photographs that we take is a bunch of light rays that we can use as measurement vectors. And so every time we squeeze that shutter, we get a 40 million um, measurements uh, just instantaneously. Then the next photograph is another 40 million measurements that are intersecting. And by process of triangulation, you can build that very dense model of, um, of the ground surface and, uh, and everything on top of it. So that stuff is starting to really uh, capture uh, global attention. We started with it here in Australia and Australia was one of the early adopters of the technology. I think it underpins most major engineering projects in this country now. It's used as a geospatial framework uh, for major engineering and construction uh, projects. Uh, it's also, we're applying it in CBDs and, and very high value capital investment areas um, because there's a lot of interest in things like line of sight analysis and shadowing and solar insulation and uh, a whole lot of derived data sets uh, from that information. That's awesome. How interesting. And so would people who are using that kind of technology, are there any other uh, different technologies that they would use with it? Or is it quite kind of a, a something that you use in silo? Yeah, it's... Um... Yeah, that's an interesting question. I think a lot of people want to relate their own uh, data sets with it. You know, in the in the construction industry, for example, there might be um, an association of ground penetrating radar so that people can see uh, underground assets and then relate them to our 3D models. And they can do that to a very high degree of accuracy, by the way. So we're talking five centimeter in uh, X, Y, and Z uh, accuracy. Uh, so yeah, that's an example. I think, um, the models that we produce are so comprehensive uh, that often people don't need any other validation. They can see every tree, every shrub, every gutter, every bird bath, yeah, you name it. Yeah. So you mentioned at the beginning Metro Map, that's now become a subscription base. What, what was the decision behind turning it into that? Tell me more about Metro Map. Yeah, so Metro Map is uh, a high resolution, high coverage uh, type uh, operation. Um, you know, we could, we operated in a sort of a project uh, environment for many years and, you know, built up a very loyal clientele of uh, customers there. Um, but we could see that there were definite efficiencies to be gained and, um, and coordination of our flying activities to be gained by uh, flying once and selling the product many times. So, uh, you know, in, in, in our previous project environment, sometimes we were having to do illogical things. You know, we would have to fly a particular area for one customer and then turn around the next day and fly it for the next customer. I mean, it's a waste of everybody's time and energy. So, um, yeah, we, we've taken a coordination role, I think with Metro Map in that we are producing a very high quality product, something that's suitable for our geospatial customers as well as the corporate market, the banks and the insurance companies and, the, and mortgage broking and all those sort of things. Uh, and, uh, you know, we have one product that is able to satisfy all those demands. Um, we're using our own uh, camera technology to do that. We've patented our own camera, MetroCam, and uh, that's producing five centimeter pixel resolution imagery from uh, 10,700 feet, so. Uh, a lot better than the iPhone camera then. <laughs> it, it is indeed, yeah. yes. Uh, I, I'll say that iPhone and, and uh, you know, phone camera technology has moved on a very long way, but so have the big camera manufacturers yeah. as well, yeah. That's great. I know that you guys are, are ramping up your operations over in the US and you've recently uh, signed a contract with Google. Can you tell me more about that? Yeah, so uh, yeah, we've known for a long time that our 3D product had uh, very strong applications uh, worldwide. And it's because it's a fairly light capital uh, investment required, we can, uh, we can take that product global. 
Um, we used to say prior to COVID that we could be anywhere in the world in 48 hours to 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 a project, you know. But uh, COVID's put a bit of a squash on that. But uh, as far as uh, the United States is concerned, yeah, it was a big target market there, an economy 15 times the size of Australia's. Um, we were getting a lot of web traffic from the US, looking at our 3D models in Australia, and uh, the stories that we were hearing with, indicated to us there was an appetite there. So. Uh, when we listed in December 2019, we set aside some of those funds to, um, to go and explore the market over there, which is what we've been doing for the last 18 months. Um, we embarked on capturing several cities just to demonstrate to people in their own uh, backyard uh, what we could do. Uh, and uh, we've just completed the, uh, the city of San Francisco. Uh, that's uh, that's a, a wonderful model, and uh, if you've been to San Francisco, it's just like being there. It's amazing. Oh, how amazing! <laughs> yeah, and um, and uh, we attracted the attention of, of Google in that process. We've also covered uh, Denver and uh, Miami, uh, and uh, we're working on Manhattan at the moment. So uh, yeah, lots of potential over there. And that's great. And I guess, you know, in a situation like this where you're not able to travel as much, even just working on those projects would be um, would be very interesting to kind of. Oh, indeed. Yeah, it's not our first foray into the United States. You know, we, we have uh, we previously mapped the city of Philadelphia for the Pope's visit there in 2015. Uh, the 3D model was used for event management, for security, um, you know, for planning the engineering for uh, grandstands and that sort of thing as well. So. Um, yeah, we've, we're confident that there's a really big future there in the States. So it sounds like there's lots of different use cases for it. Is there, are there any use cases that are quite, uh, maybe the most unique one that you've seen or? Um... Yeah, uh, there was a really good one uh, we did here in Australia, which was, uh, we looked at the, um, we, we were asked to model the view from every apartment window of a building that hadn't been constructed yet uh, as, a, as a way of, <laughs> selling off, off the plan, basically. So uh, yeah, we were able to do it uh, to a very high degree of accuracy. What you would see out of our model uh, apartment window was exactly what you see. Uh, and we were able to include in the view other buildings that were scheduled for completion, but hadn't been built yet. So, you know, there's this mix of virtual reality and, and actual reality uh, that we can use in those sort of things. And That's just one example, but yeah. that could be a business all on its own. Wow. And on the airplane, is it, do you have your pilot and then you've got like an operator of the technology or is it automatic or how does that work as well? Yeah, at the moment we're running two person uh, crews, the pilot and, and the operator. Uh, the operator looks after the, the sensor system, whether it's a camera system or a LIDAR system. Um, the pilot's got plenty to do in, in the airspace over cities. So, you know, we don't like to burden the pilots with having to manage cameras as well. So Fair enough. That would be pretty tricky I imagine yeah and where do you see the industry heading in the future uh yeah I can see a definite trend towards the subscription model um you know we've seen that over the last 10 years really developing quite strongly um for, for these sort of services the uh the trend towards analytics towards extracting the information that our customers really want and need um is is very important. You know, the impact of artificial intelligence is, is going to be profound in our industry. We're seeing it already. We've invested a lot in it and um, we're working with other people who are doing the same. Um, and there's going to be a transition from 2D maps to 3D maps. Uh, it, it's happening and it, I expect to see it happen over the next you know, five to 10 year time frame. Yeah. And do you think things like um, VR and AR will kind of come into this as well? So people will have overlaying things yeah that'll be really cool yeah absolutely look we've seen some of the largest corporations in the world making big investments in 3d technology for vr and ar and that's facebook with oculus rift um, microsoft with hololens uh, google with google glasses you name it everybody's got their implementation of it and all the software that goes with that but they need data content they need 3d data content to make these things work uh, and that's what we provide in in extraordinary detail and resolution. Well, final question would be um, if for people listening today, how do they find out more? How, what's the kind of call to action? Yeah, so uh, look, our website is a constant source of uh, information. Uh, we have a YouTube channel. Uh, have a look at our videos. They're, they're stunning. Uh, we're very active on social media and LinkedIn and so forth. So people can follow us on those platforms. 
Um, yeah, I would say that, uh, yeah, there's lots of ways to, to keep in touch with what we're doing and we are listed on the ASX, so you'll see regular uh, ASX announcements there as well. Fantastic. Yeah, I was loving your website. I was looking at it, all the different videos, and it's very nice to, to kind of just get a, a view of some other countries when I'm, I'm in lockdown in Sydney. So it's very, uh, yeah, it was very nice from that perspective as well. Yeah, well, virtual tourism and virtual travel is something that's really come to the front of everybody's mind. During yeah, and yeah. This is a way of doing it. If you've, if you've been to San Francisco before and you look through our model, it just triggers floods of memories. It's wonderful. It does. And you definitely leave feeling much happier so yeah it was it was an awesome experience well thank you so much mark for your time today i really appreciate it um is there any kind of anything i've missed any kind of parting words um no i would say that, that that's a pretty good wrap i think of, of what we do I, i'd say that uh you know we have a terrific team here at aerometrics a bunch of passionate people um you know i've come to the end of my career but i feel like a kid in a lolly book uh, a lolly store honestly you know it's um it's been a wonderful experience uh, to see the development of this technology and how it's being appreciated now around the world. That's great. Well, thanks again for your time. I appreciate it. And um, best of luck with everything. Thank you very much.